Most of the forecast for the boat was not as it came out, so it was a surprise in a sense. However, one had to wonder whether, what does it mean, uh, no. For uh, some people, no meant that uh, we want to break, uh, we might be better on our own after all these years of austerity, and on our own, even with the drachma, uh, will be in a better position. For other people, it was simply to say we want to be Europe aware of how difficult the situation is, and in a sense we would like to find a, a solution that takes into account. Those two questions are different. A referendum has always to have, if it wants to be credible, a very clear question that people know what happens the day after. Like we bought the constitution and the day after we apply the constitution. In this case, it was not clear. So it was an element of confusion. And therefore, it's not surprising that uh, a lot of polls were wrong. Why? Because people were also voting at the same time other things. In particular, they were going to the bank, getting out the, all the money possible, out of the, their banks, basically leaving the banks without any deposits or just the people, the, the few that they left. And at the same time, any question about do you like to leave the euro and, the, and Europe, 70% will say no to that, or yes to Europe in a sense. And it's not uh, surprising that in the last few days, just before the referendum, they tried to solve it. I mean, this was sent this uh, proposal basically was accepting the conditions to avoid it. They talk all the time that this is not to break with the euro. So I think that in a sense people were voting yes, yes to Europe. I think that's my reading. Of course, we don't know exactly. There are a few people who had said no anyway, we just better on our... But if the question would have been clear, do you want tomorrow the drachma or you want this? Probably would have been different. I think there are two elements to that. One is what I said before, that many of these referendums are not very clear what are the consequences of saying yes or, say, or and in particular saying no, okay, in this case. Um, and this happened in the previous ones. But there is an element which related to that, which is we take euro for granted. So we take for granted that the things are going to work, that we're going to be able to travel, we're going to have all these things. And then, of course, if we say no, it means like, okay, can I improve a little on my side? So there is an element of opportunism in those things. When people vote for the Parliament, European Parliament, are voting, we're thinking about domestic issues or about European issues. And we're still too much on the domestic issues, even though more and more is the European issues which matter because it will tell you whether you have these packages or not, or these things. So we are moving in this, but maybe a little too slow. Whether it's credible, that's exactly the main issue. And this, the whole process of these five years is this combination of confusion and credibility. Confusion because on the one hand, they said, okay, we will do all these things, and then sometimes you don't see them happening, okay? Or on the other hand, because the, on the European side, they say, okay, yeah, we will do whatever it takes. But that's not clear. You have to put the, the more clear in, in which conditions and whether these conditions are really possible and feasible. So it's been always this discussion. Maybe it would have been much clean from the beginning to say, we cannot afford all this level of debt of Greece. We can only afford 60%. And then let's be careful about how these things work. Of course, that will have meant a more serious haircut for some banks, and probably some banks were not happy about that, and that's what didn't happen. At that point, it was also said that will create a lot of contagion. Well, contagion, we had it in any case. And a haircut, we had it in any case. And we, a lot of this money that we gave them was to help the 
financial system in Greece, which now is again needs help. So we want to stop that, no? So in a sense, well, we have to put clear, draw the lines. It's true, however, that steps have been done in Greece. And seriously, steps have been done. I mean, in terms of the wages and so the efforts people had made, and that's part of the despair and resentment people have. So things have changed. And, for example, something that is important is that there was an agreement or there was a serious discussion about having a debt restructuring, which is a major point, but this is conditional on having what is a primary deficit, or say a primary surplus, okay? So which means that it's not just simply to pay more debts and more debts and more debts, to, cro to stop on that. And it's true that before the new government, CISPAS, came in, they were already in this path. So it's a little funny that now it's him who's claiming that's going to ask the credibility because in the last few months nothing had happened. On the other hand, things might have changed. I mean, people also grew up when they have to take some responsibilities. And it's true that maybe the best aspect of the referendum is that if he has the authority to say, now we wanted to go and find a solution, we need to do some things. And some things sometimes it may be to cut defense expenditure, so they don't have to be all the time the same people. But the important thing, and also this is a lesson for both parts, is that I think a mistake had been from the beginning to be too interventionist on telling them what to do. A demo is a project to, is called for a, a dynamic European Monetary Union, and it's precisely to bring what we have learned quite a lot in the last few years in macroeconomics in particular, or also in legal aspects and so on, to reassess the framework and to try to bring better solutions. This goes in parallel that changes have been done. There is that this so-called Von Rompuy report in 2012 of the four presidents. Now in June has been a new report of the five presidents, okay? And, and, they, and this had been a steps being done about creating the banking union and all these things. So it goes in this direction. So let me be more specific to the case. Something that uh, we work is about what is the best way to design mechanisms and contracts across countries and so on. Something that the theory shows is that the debt Usually, that is not the optimal thing to do. Yeah. So, for example, I work here uh, with Professor Albert Marcel. We develop a theory of recursive contracts, and that tells us better ways to do things. And we apply that with a project we, in a demo with other colleagues, Arpat Avram and other colleagues, to design more a stability mechanisms. What does it mean? It means that, for example, why is not that the, the best way to do it? Is because we'll find, for example, Greek now, right now has to pay back to the, uh, to the ECB, and it's certainly not the, the right time. So that's why they are doing this renegotiation. Well, this could have been foreseen from the beginning. And some of the things can be foreseen. So you have to make it conditional. And then you say, oh, well, but then people can always say, it's, it's always the bad time to pay, no? Uh, and yes. So, so, so then exactly that's what you have to do. That's why measures, like they were saying before, well, we are able to do a lot of effort on our part, but show that you can do it by not being in deficit constantly. Okay, so you're arranging those things. So some things have to be shown. And that's the way, so, so theory help us, but I am also recognize that we are not at that level of detail, okay? And so that's a challenge also from the point of view of developing theory, but we already know that we can deliver more than what we have on the table now. And certainly it will have to change when you think the framework to the current situation in which the whole load is in the ECB hands. It cannot be that Draghi has such political responsibility. Of course, we do it definitely because then there's the Eurogroup and all these meetings and all these things, but that's is uh, that's exactly what it needs. And that's why, for example, not only we are economists, we also have lawyers to discuss these issues and see how we can help.